Hi everybody, I'm Emily Borman Chope, the Medical Director for Newborn Care here at the University of Minnesota Riverside Hospital. I'm going to give you about one minute overview on everything you need to know about jaundice in a newborn and how to track your results. So just a quick reminder, jaundice is yellow color of the skin. It's from something in your blood called bilirubin. Most newborns get some jaundice because bilirubin comes from red blood cells being recycled. Babies aren't very good at recycling their red blood cells and they have more red blood cells when they're born. So all of our babies are going to get a transcutaneous bilirubin checked when they're 24 hours of age. And if they have an elevated level, we'll probably check a serum in combination with their metabolic screen. Your job as the nurse uh, or provider who's caring for that baby is going to be figuring out what to do with that result. So that's where this famous phototherapy nomogram <clears throat> comes in that most of you have seen. So I just want to make sure everybody understands these two nomograms. So this top nomogram is called the risk assessment nomogram. This top one does not tell us if we should start phototherapy. It tells us that a baby is at risk for having significant jaundice when they go home from the hospital. So it gives us some idea about babies that we need to watch more closely. So let's say it's 24 hours old and this baby had a serum bilirubin of 9. You can see that that puts this baby in the high risk zone and they are going to need some follow up bilirubin levels. Now you'll probably all remember that on the back side here we have some recommendations about when they should have their bilirubin rechecked. And at the end I'm going to give you a little tip for my favorite resource as a supplement to this. So step one when you get a bilirubin level, you plot it. You write down, I'm not going to write everything here, but you would write down 24 hours old, you would write down that it's 9, you'd put your initials and the date and the time. Now, the thing that's really important, and when you call the doctor to report on the bilirubin levels, is you also need to plot that number on the phototherapy nomogram. This is the graph that tells us if we need to start phototherapy. So, top graph tells us if they're at risk, but it doesn't tell us anything about whether to start treatment. Bottom graph tells us do we need to start treatment. So, same baby, 24 hours old, their bilirubin is 9. Now what's the deal with these crazy lines? Dotted, dashed, solid. I guarantee if you call a doctor on call and say, well the dot's kind of on the dashed line but below the dotted line, we're not going to know what you're talking about. So what you need to do for us is get familiar with this box here. That top dotted line is for babies who are greater than 38 weeks gestation and they don't have anything that puts them at risk for having trouble with jaundice. That dashed line is for babies who are greater than 38 weeks and have a risk for jaundice, or these are our late pretermers, 35 to 37 and 6 sevenths. This bottom solid line is our late pretermers who have a risk factor for jaundice. Now what's a risk factor for jaundice? I've got this handy sheet here. The main ones we're going to be thinking about are blood group incompatibilities. These are the Coombs positive. So mom is Rh negative, or mom has O blood type and baby has A or B blood type. Our late preterm risk factor is already kind of built into the graph. Some of these are kind of minor, but we'd ask as a sibling has phototherapy, do they have a big huge bruise on their head? Because guess what's in that bruise? Blood. It's going to get recycled. It's going to turn into bilirubin. Babies who have lost a ton of weight with breastfeeding might have more trouble with jaundice, or babies who are East Asian may have more trouble with jaundice. So if you call the doctor or other provider to report the bilirubin levels, and you can say, well, the bilirubin is 9, but this is a 38-weeker, so they're at low risk, but the two older siblings both had phototherapy, and oh, by the way, their Coombs is 2+, that's going to make us think twice about whether we should start phototherapy on this baby, and in fact, we probably should. So you have all the information at your disposal to help the um, doctor and you who are working together to provide care for this baby make a good decision. So, take-home points. Top graph, important, but it tells us about risk. 
it doesn't tell us anything about if we need to start phototherapy. Bottom graph, phototherapy, tells us if we need to start it and you need to look at the gestational age of the baby and risk factors like Coombs positive blood type mismatch to decide which line applies to your baby. Now, here is my little secret weapon. I am now revealing the trick that the doctors are using. This is free. You can use it too. BillyTool.org. This website took the recommendation that the AAP used to create these nomograms where they studied thousands of babies and plotted their bilirubin levels and they made it into a really spiffy free online computer program. So you go BillyTool.org. Then you can either say what time the baby was born and the time their blood was drawn or their TCB was done. Or I prefer the simpler one, I just say how old the baby was and what their total bilirubin level was. So they're 24 hours old, their bilirubin was 9. You click Submit. Then it just tells you what to do. So isn't this spiffy? It says high risk. It says look at what age your baby is. If they're the 38-weeker with no risk factors, the late pretermer or late pretermer with risk factors, and then it tells you start phototherapy, no, no, or yes. Obviously, this isn't the bottom line. So if there's other complicating factors, you can, of course, start phototherapy at a lower level. But if it's above this number, you surely better be thinking about starting phototherapy for that baby. And then over here, it tells you when you should be checking another bilirubin level for that baby. These are all built into our order sets already. It's consistent with what you're already doing. I just want you to know about another resource that's available to you to think about how to monitor and treat jaundice in newborns. So you know where to find me if you have questions. I'm Emily borman Shope, the Medical Director for Newborn Care. Thank you so much for all the great work you do taking care of babies.